Hi folks, welcome back. This is the third video for my Tau Ghost Kill and uh, in this one I'll be showing you how I test out the oil brushes by Ammo by Mig Yemenes. It's my first time using them. This one is more of a documentary than a tutorial. So I'll quickly run through what I did with them and show you the results. Okay, let's go. I love working with oil paints and when I do, I pull out this little box, it's got all of them in there and uh, I choose the colors that I want to go with. Then I apply them to a piece of cardboard like this. Now Ammo by Mig Yemenes have sent me this, this small bag and this is meant to uh, do the job of the two previous steps that I've shown. So let's test them out. Rummaging through the pack I found this one, Starship Filth. Seems like an obvious one to go with and let's use some enamel odorless thinner. It's a dark greasy color so I figured I could use it on the backpack there. First things first. I decided to give it a shake just to see if there's any moving parts in there. No, nothing. Cap unscrews, uh, they slide out. You can feel that the paint is quite thick in there. There's a little bit of, uh, not friction's not the, not the right word because there's oil in there, right? But there's a little bit of resistance as you pull it out. I uh, give it a shake. Then I tried to see if it would, uh, look, look here. <laughs> see if it would spill and come out. I mean, you know, Stinky Link doing the test runs for us, right? Being as this is oil paint, it should give us a, a decent working time. So I decided to put in a couple more dots uh, to use this darker color as a little bit of a shadow area. I've used brown in previous steps, so I wanted to uh, accentuate a couple of deeper parts. So I go with a darker color there. Again, the color looks a little greasy to me, so I added it here. Might look like a slight mechanical. See this dot on the knee there? Then when you're done, it's really easy to put them away. I mean, that's it. Put it in, screw it on, done. Now let's see how they react to uh, odorless enamel thinners and uh, stretch them out. This part was surprisingly familiar for me. I mean, they really do work just like oil paints. I can tell that they're a little bit different, but uh, you can see they're stretching out and uh, their ability to uh, thin and self-level is perfect. Here I am reworking it uh, around the back of the model here. Uh, I put a few dots around. Now I've got a, I've got a good uh, mix on my brush. It's got the, uh, the enamel thinner, picks it up, and then I'm able to, to keep working it around. And uh, I'm using it as a, as a kind of a localized wash there. That's one thing I like to do with these kinds of, uh, these advanced paints is that uh, it's not set in stone. You don't have to be only doing one process at one time. You can, uh, as your paint changes consistency uh, over the, uh, the time that you're working with it, you can use it for different effects and uh, save yourself a bit of time without having to go back to the uh, the original step of say adding more paint or more thinner. Just work it out while you're doing it and then come back and reapply once you have to. Uh, you don't have to be a slave to the process, make the process work for you. Here's an excellent close up of how this color looks over a, uh, a glossy white surface and I like how it looks like accumulated uh, uh, dust and dirt. Literally, it looks like space filth. I mean, the name for this product was uh, was very well thought up and uh, I love how it looks. So uh, I will definitely be using this a great deal on white. Lovely long working time in action here. That's one of the first dots I put on this model before going all the way around it. And coming back to it now, it's still in a very nice workable state. Sorry for the camera jump, but I wanted to show that every now and then I will clean the brush because now I'm going to cut the Starship fills back. Now look at that. Now I'm doing more of a cleaning process there because I wanted to keep that part of the model a little bit brighter and white uh, on that front facing there. So I was able to do both with this paint, really good. Now with the brush damp in thinner, the odorless enamel thinner, I've moved ahead and uh, you can see I'm stippling action around the details to leave a certain amount of uh, effect for dirtiness and stretching it out so that it doesn't clump. A couple of the places I'm working on here, they're key focal points of the model. So I'll use multiple layers here and test out the translucent effects of the oil brusher paints. This is the exact moment when I spun it around in my hands and said, hey, these are really good and easy. Let's test out some other colors. Rummaging through the bag, I picked this one. It just says earth and uh, earth on feet. That seems pretty simple. Let's give this a test. The first thing I noticed when putting this on was that I can dot on the paints really easy with the applicator. So I don't always need to use a, uh, a two brush effect. I could actually just do this, dot it on quickly and leave it. Like you can see some really small dots there. I was actually able to, uh, to accentuate and add to the chipping effect with the oil brush applicator. And doing two things at once, three things at once almost, uh, that really helps uh, pay dividends to get your model finished quickly and easily. Here's a super quick close-up. You can see the effect there. It's really, really good. And it was easy. 
Let's see how the uh, effects on the feet now uh, work with uh, applying some odorless enamel thinner over the top. And I'll try to stretch it out there. Uh, I didn't leave any drying time whatsoever. This is straight on. I'm uh, expanding some of the dots and uh, I'll just leave some of them as is. Now I remember about this stage of the model that I forgot I was working with oil brushes. To me it was like working with my old friend oil paints. Once you get past the uh, initial easy application from the, uh, the oil brusher itself, uh, it's just working with oil paints again, which is fantastic. Super favorite here, red primer. I had to use this on the helmet. By this stage, I'm feeling a little bit more cheeky and adventurous, so I thought, let's try this as a highlight for the edges. The tone looks ever so slightly lighter than the, uh, the base color I've used for the helmet here, so I put it around places that I felt would catch the light and to use it for a little bit of uh, color modulation. Here you can see the accuracy of the applicator. Not needing to switch between brushes saved me a lot of time and I was able to dot the, uh, the oil paint into very specific places that I wanted to uh, augment. Then again, with the uh, soft brush dipped into odorless enamel thinners, I've spread and done a localized wash and filter effect with the oil paints. And you can see I'm spreading them out here, very light, soft touch, and just move them gently into place. Let's test red. With the surface still damp from the previous step, I wanted to increase the chromatic richness, the richness of color, by applying some straight red over the top and letting it mix with the primer red that was already on the surface. And it looks really cool. Next, let's test out the white oil brusher. First time with this, so I was quite careful and tentative. So I just placed a couple of dots around in places that I'd like to look a little brighter. Small steps, just in case I need to recover. I'm really enjoying the start-stop nature of this. It's so easy to pack up and clean up after using oil brushes. A twist of the cap and they're safely away. A different technique to try this time with a dry flat brush, I'm going to try stippling the paint in without any thinner whatsoever to see how it blends in to a satin finished surface. I quite liked the result, it was very easy. The oil brusher paint remained soft, it wasn't too dry like some uh, paint remains on your palette for too long. It was in a very good nice workable state and uh, you can see I got a nice highlight effect uh, here on the thigh on the ghost keel as well as the upper chest here, which I wanted to be the primary bright focal point for this model. So you can see the uh, size of the dot that I placed in there and then working it in here, uh, a very nice chromatic improvement. Oil brusher earth. Out of habit, I give these things a shake, but I can't hear anything. I don't believe there's moving parts inside. It's really just paint. And this illustrates the very fast start stop nature. As soon as I want to do some environmental weathering, uh, I can open up a product called Earth and boom, I'm straight back into it. After my first tentative experiments with this, I decided that I wanted to test how it works for a heavier application. Here you can see instead of just using the point of the brush, I'm using the flat of the brush to lay a much thicker coat on. Again with the idea of having a heavier application, I'm using some odorless enamel thinners here and using it to make a generalized broader wash and move it around the lower leg here of the battle suit. Using the low surface tension properties of the mineral spirits here, the odorless enamel thinner, allows the, uh, the paint to sink into the crevices very nicely and it produces quite a pleasing and realistic effect. Working some of the heavier application back over the white armor here on the feet and you can see that it's slightly translucent. It produced a very cool uh, effect. Here I am going back and reworking some of the underneath the details here to help to give it a shadow. And whilst the brush is still a little bit damp, I'm reworking it to help it give it a streak effect. Uh, which streaks always just look really cool on something like this. I'm pretty happy even watching the video back now that uh, seeing that I was able to produce a reasonably dense effect on the feet uh, in a couple of steps and in a very short period of time. So for that reason, I gave the, uh, the oil brusher earth color a very big thumbs up. I quite like that one. And lastly, because the feet are such a focal point here, I gave it a very quick stipple just to blend the paint in that little bit more. Looks awesome. Dark mud. Lastly, I wanted to put one darker color over the top to give it a more layered effect. Similar processes here, washing the paint in with a little bit of enamel, odorless thinner, produced a very pleasing and realistic effect. Dark blue, and I'm going to use this for shadows on the back here of the model. I actually learned this technique directly from Mig Yemenez himself when he did a demo for us in Shizuoka in Japan. Please be very careful with blue, it's a powerful color. And you can see I'm mixing it here again with the odorless enamel thinners and stretching it about on the places that shadow would fall on the model. 
All done. Thank you very much for sticking with me, guys. Now, I've been a long-term fan of oil paints, but I give a big thumbs up to these oil brusher things. I mean, they're oil paint, not as we know it, are uh, good, fast, and clean. So I really did like them. Please try the colors that I've shown you in this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't miss out. Please subscribe, and all the best with the Ammo channel. Bye.